Today, I'm gonna to be installing the four inch long arm kit from Rough Country on my 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ. Finally, after a six month long wait, I'm getting to do this install. Guys, I understand why it took this long. It's not the most popular vehicle out there on the road, but I'm not gonna lie to you, the wait really, really sucked. Keep in mind that this is a 2003. On older vehicles, make sure you start spraying down your bolts with rust penetrant. I like to use free all here at my shop. It works really, really good. You can find it at your hardware store. It just allows everything to come apart way easier if you hit it a couple days in advance. A couple things to point out on this kit is it does have sway bar disconnects in the front. They are loud. It is what it is. A lot of sway bar disconnects are loud. One thing Rough Country could have done is the pin that you mount the sway bar in link to the hole could have been drilled closer so that way it doesn't allow the bottom to shift back and forth. Wish they would have done that. Another thing that's a bonus that you get for here is you get the Stealth Bomber tri link for the diff in the back. I would not consider this a beginner kit, you know, more of like a three inch. Something where you're not gonna be cutting parts off the vehicle would be a lot easier for a beginner. But if you do have a basic knowledge of any sort of crafts, like woodworking, anything else like that, you guys should be able to figure out your way through this kit. We're gonna get started on the four inch long arm kit. Before we do, make sure you subscribe. That way I can keep making these videos for you guys. I love doing it and also it proves to the owner that you guys like watching it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the lift under the vehicle. We're gonna get it up in the air, support the axles. On mine, I had pre-soaked everything, but I go ahead and spray it down again just to make sure everything comes apart nice and easy. All right, after we get the axle all supported, ratchet straps, pull jacks, jack stands, however you guys wanna do it, what we're gonna do from here is we're gonna start removing shocks, control arm bolts, all that stuff, free up the axle, get it ready for the next portion of the install. The axle mounts uh, for my springs had rusted off. I actually go back later on after this install and weld in a piece of, I believe it's three and a quarter inch, quarter inch DOM tube, weld that back on there. And what that does is basically replaces the part that had rusted off.
After I get the control arms disconnected, what I end up doing is the track bar or pan hard bar, whatever you want to call it. Um, one thing to keep in mind is 99% of the time when death wobble occurs on a vehicle, it is more than likely the track bar. One thing that's nice about this kit is you do get a new one. The next step of this process is we're going to be cutting the lower control arm pockets off the WJ. I'm not going to lie, Sawzall cutoff wheel is not exactly the best or most fun way to do it. I had to do it because my plasma cutter decided to die on me this day. But all that proves to you guys is you can do it with your tools. Once you guys get those control arm pockets cut off, make sure you grind, clean, paint, undercoat, whatever you wanna to do to protect the uh, bare metal you guys just exposed. Get that all cleaned up, looking nice. We're gonna get on to uh, removing the transmission cross member. We're, I'm gonna support it with a pole jack. You can do this with a two by four and a jack if you're doing it on the ground. This keeps everything where we want it to and allows us to pull that cross member without any sort of issue. Once you get your transmission cross member out of your way, you're gonna notice the transmission mount hanging from the bottom of the transmission. Go ahead and pull this off. They're gonna supply you with new mounts, new cross member, all that stuff. The transmission cross member is actually where your new control arms are gonna mount. It moves it back 18 to 24 inches from the original mounting location. Now, one thing I did do on this kit is they tell you to use a hole saw. Guys, if you go, wanna go to Harbor Freight or a place like that and pick up a big step bit, you can actually replace a lot of the hole saw areas with the step bit. Just keep in mind, step bits do kick off a lot of hot metal in comparison to a hole saw. But in my opinion, it was a little bit faster for me. After you guys are finished drilling the holes, make sure you go back through with some sort of paint we want to do this on everything this is going to be the last time i mention this and spray any area you have any new metal exposed this will keep it from rusting after the paint and everything has dried what you're going to do is install the bolt and nut plate or tab nut from rough country up into the support structure Next thing we're going to be doing is putting together the lower control arms. What's nice is they supply you with the measurements, so make sure you're there. Final adjustments will be done either from you guys if you're going to align it in your driveway, which is possible to do, or the make sure you have a good alignment shop that will adjust them properly for you. Now, one thing I do when I put these control arms together is I grease the threads and add a little bit of Loctite. You don't see me add the Loctite in the video, but what this does is it keeps everything from freezing up. And then if you need to make adjustments, for example, depending on what type of drive shaft you have, if it's just a regular two U-joints on the end, or if you have a double cardigan, basically depending on what drive shaft you have depends on what your pinion angle on the front axle is gonna be that can cause the front control arm measurements to vary from the instructions. While you guys are going ahead and putting together your front lower control arms, go ahead and do the same thing for the front, we'll call them upper control arms. They go from the lower control arm to the top of the axle. They give you these measurements as well. Same thing, you're gonna have a jam nut, the heim joint, go ahead and grease and anti-seize those threads put them together, get them measured up. Once you're happy with all your measurements, you're gonna go ahead and install these with the bolts into their new location and then onto the axle.
from there, I go ahead and pull off my bump stops. One thing you will notice is my bump stops are old and disgusting. These are gonna get replaced uh, down the road. Bump stops just keep your axle from slamming into the frame. So as long as there's something in between there and it's not solid, you guys are good. You're gonna install the bump stop extension. All it is is basically two long bolts, the bump stop extension and the cup. You put it back up in there, smash your bumps, rubber bump stop back up in there. Guess what we get to do now? We get to install the front springs onto the WJ. You're getting close to being done with the front end. This is probably the longest part of this install. After you get your springs thrown in, you're gonna wanna go through and tighten all of your jam nuts on all of the control arms. Uh, what I end up doing is wedging a pry bar up into the heim joint. This keeps it from becoming crooked in the mount and allows you to tighten that nut down. I would recommend putting a witness mark or a what I call a CYA mark, a cover your ass mark. This allows you to, when you have a strange noise or something, you can peek up under the vehicle and make sure those jam nuts are all where they're supposed to be. So after I got the springs, control arms, all that stuff tightened up, we're gonna do an extra add-on step. I ordered the four inch pinman arm drop for my WJ. This is an extra step. It does not come with a kit. It is an add-on. I recommend doing it. You guys will need a special pimmon arm puller for this install. And also it will be stuck on the vehicle. So some way to apply heat and some way to carefully cut the pitman arm. You guys notice I do try to pull it first. I can't get it. So what I do is I cut the pitman arm 99% of the way through to not hit the steering shaft. Then I hit it with my air hammer. You can do the same thing with a hammer and chisel. This cracks it all the way through. You put your puller on and it comes right off. Before we install the pitman arm, we are gonna wanna go ahead and remove the drag link. This is the link from the pitman arm to the knuckle. On mine, I ended up using a pickle fork. I do not recommend doing this. If you want to save that joint, I end up replacing all of my front end suspension components. From there, what I end up doing is putting on the track bar. Uh, one way you can do it is if you have the Jeep up in the front, up, up in the air, you can actually attach a ratchet strap to either a control arm or a portion of the axle that you're not gonna pinch or crush a brake line or a wire and ratchet strap that axle back under the vehicle to where you need it to because as soon as you undo that track bar, it's going to shift. Another way you can do this, if you have a buddy and it's actually easier, is once you get the install completely done, you set the vehicle down on the ground and you can start it up and actually steer the vehicle and this will allow the body of the vehicle to actually shift over the axle, allowing you to slide that bolt right in. Just keep in mind, do little adjustments at a time. The vehicle is going to shift, so keep any body parts free from pinch points. It will hurt, it will crush. Okay, so front end's 99% done. Where we're gonna go from here is we're gonna install the sway bar in-link disconnects. They will have a crush sleeve that goes in between the where the old sway bar in-link used to mount and then the new pin. Make sure that's installed 
properly. This is all laid out for you in the instructions. Slide that pin through, put your nut on, put a screwdriver in the end of it and tighten that thing down. Once you're done with that, put your sway bar and links on the sway bar. Make sure they're adjusted to the proper length. Now it's on to the rear. What you're gonna do, similar to the front, support your rear axle pretty much the same way you did the front and we're gonna remove shocks, sway bars, control arms. One thing you will notice is you do not have an upper control arm. This is where I get into that goofy stealth bomber rear link. Once the lower control arms are removed from the vehicle, you're gonna be cutting off your mounts just like the fronts. Yes, it's gonna take a while if you don't have a plasma cutter. I cannot stress this enough. This part of the process was a long, tedious one. Rough Country supplies you with lower control arm mounts. On the driver's side of the vehicle, you will have to move the fuel lines and I believe brake lines out of your way. You, this can be done with a small pry bar or carefully with a screwdriver. Make sure you do not bend them too much to create a kink. These are metal lines. They will bend enough to get out of your way. On the driver's side lower mount, I believe there are already holes in the frames you go ahead and line up with. It tells you in the instructions. Once you do that, you're gonna be measuring for the new nut plates to go in there. I will be honest with you guys, you need to be close it doesn't have to be a hundred percent precise if you're 16th eighth inch off you'll be okay go ahead and install your nut plates it's going to be two lower and two up on the side on the passenger side you will have to drop the exhaust to get it out of your way but it's a lot easier to drill those holes because you don't have the line once again i use the step bit on the bigger holes, the smaller holes. I did end up getting the recommended drill bits for the smaller holes. Uh, made life a lot easier. You can actually purchase a lot of these drill bits off of Amazon uh, and they tend to be around 10 to 20 bucks a piece. Now that you guys have your lower control arm mounts installed, what you're going to do is same thing as the front lower control arms measure those up grease etc all that stuff get them thrown together get them onto the vehicle here comes the most difficult and frustrating part is removing the old Y-Link stealth bomber thing from the back of the WJ. There are two bolts that are under this thing that go into the top of the differential. They suck to get out. They are locked tighted in. It's gonna take time. The only way I found out to do it because I was not able to get my ball joint free was to use a 21 or a 13 16 ratcheting wrench and just brute force these things out. Another thing you'll need to do on the Stealth Bomber is disconnect all of your lines, uh, your brake lines, ABS lines, all that stuff that run down it. It's, uh, I believe, a 13 millimeter. You pull all of those off. You get the bolts off the differential. This whole thing comes out as one piece. Like I mentioned it before, once when you get this out, it feels really good because those two 21 millimeter bolts suck. After that, you're gonna mount the new Stealth Bomber. Uh, plate onto the top of the axle. 
The Stealth Bomber will have a hind joint in it. They do give you measurements. Guys, they make this kit really, really easy when it comes to slapping everything together. I didn't really have to adjust much beyond the front once when I got my new drive shaft. Your Stealth Bomber heim joints in, the jam nuts in place. You're gonna go ahead and throw this into the vehicle, replace the two bolts that you took out, and then you'll have a new uh, grade eight hardware bolt that's oh. half inch, you'll slide through. All right, guys, it's on to putting the springs into the vehicle. One thing you will notice in the video is my factory kind of bump stop area is rusted out. I'm gonna end up welding it just like I did the front axle portions. This will allow me to install the uh, bump stop back in so that way I don't have any suspension issues. You get those installed, you get your springs on it, then you're gonna install your shocks. Put it in. Now, one thing I did not mention is they do send you a lower shock offset. I did not end up using these on my vehicle. One, they were really frustrating to install. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. They annoyed the hell out of me, so I took them off. Two, I'm not gonna do a ton of aggressive off-roading or rock crawling in this thing as of yet. I have them saved. So once when I get to that point in the WJ's life, I will go ahead and install those. But as of right now, I do not feel like it is necessary. Once you get your shocks on, you're gonna install your sway bar in links, similar to the bump stops in the front, two long bolts, spacer, they just come off, you put them on, easy peasy. You install your sway bar in link. So the final step of this entire kit is to go through and do your jam nuts, same as the front. Make sure you use that pry bar in the wrench to tighten them down. There's three of them on the rear, two on your two lower control arm ones, and then one on your fancy stealth bomber. Once you're done with that, guys, it's on to the fun part, throwing your wheels and tires back on, taking it out on a test drive, making sure you know everything's the way you want it. Be sure to get an alignment done if you do not know how to do this, guys. It's not worth waiting a month and costing yourself several hundred dollars in tires. Pay the hundred bucks up front or however much it is at an alignment shop. Get it done. Get out there on the trails and have fun. The reason why you move the control arms and everything back and it's called a long arm kit is it allows the vehicle to have A, a smoother ride with the lift kit on and B, it gives the suspension more travel so that way you can get over bigger obstacles or just look cool flexing on people.